Kimbo Slice became a real phenomena in the world of MMA, but he gained popularity even before the start of his professional career. Let's start from the beginning, from the history of life. Recall the popular street fights, and sure thing, consider the professional career of a fighter. The real name of the fighter is Kevin Ferguson. He was born on February 8, 1974 in Nassau, Bahamas. In early childhood, Kevin with his mother and two younger brothers moved to the United States in search of a better life, where they settled in one of the poor areas of Miami. There, Ferguson had a hard time changing several educational institutions. Kevin grew up as an ordinary boy who dreamed of a professional career in American football. Kimbo tried not to get into fights, and his first serious fight occurred at the age of 13, when he stood up for a weaker friend. After graduating from high school, Kevin received an athletic scholarship and went to colleges at the University of Daytona and Miami, where he studied law and criminal law. In 1992, his house was demolished by Hurricane Andrew, and Kimbo had to live in his car for a month. He qualified for the Miami Dolphins in 1997, but failed on legal issues, which is why Ferguson left college to work as a bouncer at a local strip club. There he was noticed by the owner of the porn business nicknamed Icy Mike. Icy Mike hired our hero as his driver and bodyguard. In 2003, Kimbo has his first street fight against a fighter nicknamed Big D. He did not start fighting on the street in order to get a wave of hype and become famous. He just wanted to make money to survive. In this fight, Kimbo inflicted a deep dissection on his opponent, for which he received the nickname Slice. At Icy Mike's initiative, Kimbo's fights were filmed and uploaded to adult sites, and from there, they were already uploaded to YouTube, where his fights gained real popularity. This is how Kimbo began his journey in street fights, in which he became more and more popular with each video. And the Rolling Stone magazine called Kimbo the king of the streets. In this video, Kimbo fought with two fighters at once. The first, nicknamed Afropuff, missed a few punches, and the desire to fight was gone. The second fighter, nicknamed Big Mac, was also not very good at fighting. Kimbo beat him for several minutes and knocked Big Mac down five times before he won the fight. Kimbo met worthy resistance from Boston policeman Sean Gannett, who was a six-time state champion in boxing. Sean responded blow for blow and did not back down when Kimbo attacked. Kimbo, under the onslaught of Sean, got into the fight, but here Sean was better and grabbed the enemy by the neck. This move almost provoked a massive brawl. and Sean eventually defeated Kimbo, thereby inflicting his first street fight defeat. After some time, Kimbo became a legend of street fighting without rules and was called to fight according to the rules of MMA as part of the Cage Fury Fighting Championships promotion. Kimbo's rival was Olympic heavyweight boxing champion Ray Mercer, nicknamed Merciless. For many, this fight caused laughter about the skills of Kimbo Slice, because, as he himself said, he trained exclusively in boxing and clinching. A month before this fight, Kimbo's coach was the legendary Boss Rutten, who made Slice's debut in MMA. The fight took place on June 23, 2007. From the opening seconds of the fight, Kimbo began to aggressively attack Ray and turned the fight to the ground. 
Kimbo had good control of the fight in the clinch, threw good punches with his knee. After a good combination, he again transfers the fight to the crown. Kevin grabs the opponent's neck tightly and performs a guillotine chokehold. Ray surrenders. Kimbo proved to all those who laughed at him that he is a real fighter. Kimbo jumped onto the octagon fence to celebrate the victory and said hello to Tank Abbott, who was in the hall and challenged him to a fight. But unfortunately, due to some organizational issues, the fight of Tank and Kimbo was not destined to take place just yet. After such a stunning debut in MMA, many organizations wanted to sign a contract with Kimbo, but Elite Extreme Combat was lucky enough to do it. The organization immediately arranged a fight for Kimbo in the next tournament. Bo Cantrell became Kimbo Slice's opponent. At that time, Bo Cantrell had a professional record of 10 and 10. Bo spoke a lot about Kimbo. He said that he did not quite understand what Kimbo was doing in professional MMA, since before that he was just beating children on the street. On November 10, 2007, their fight took place in the state of Texas. Kimbo, after a stare down, refused to greet Bo Contrell, who hinted to him that he would answer for his words. Kevin was as energized as possible. He was ready to show again what he was capable of. The fight started with a backfist from Cantrell that he didn't even hook Kimbo with. Kimbo pulled Bo to the cage and while approaching through a jab and then an uppercut. This combination he completed with a blow with the right elbow, after which Bo Cantrell fell to the canvas. Cantrell was lucky that the referee reacted in time and did not let Kimbo enjoy finishing him on the ground. After this fight, Bo ended his career with a 10 and 11 overall record, and Kimbo Slice became even more popular because he completed this fight in just 19 seconds. After this fight, the Elite Extreme Combat still arranges a duel against Tank Abbott. We were waiting for a fight between two street fighters. Abbott was a bright representative of the old school of MMA. In the 90s, he fought with the best representatives of mixed martial arts. When Tank appeared in the octagon, his opponents shivered and the audiences burned with delight. Tank Abbott was the embodiment of Mike Tyson in the MMA. If you want a separate video about the career of Tank Abbott, then leave your comments so that I can see that this fighter is interesting to you. While Kimbo's star was rapidly flaring up, David Lee Tank Abbott's star was fading away with the same desire. He lost seven of the last eight fights. He was in bad shape, but still this tournament attracted a lot of public attention, and Kimbo received $175,000 for it. The fight began with a short exchange in the center of the octagon, after which Tank went into a clinch and pulled Kimbo to the cage. After another fight on a collision course, Tank missed the left uppercut and then the right uppercut after which he fell to the canvas. And Kimbo began to finish him off, but hit him in the back of the head several times so that the referee stopped the fight to give Kimbo a warning, thereby postponing Tank's defeat if only for a few seconds. Continuation of the fight. The fighters converged in the center of the octagon and began to fight on a collision course. It was a big fight for two street fighters, but in the end, Kimbo was a clear favorite. He two times knocked Tank down and then ended his suffering with an accurate right cross. Kimbo finished Tank in 43 seconds. I do want to say on my own behalf that this was not the same Tank that we all knew. He was not in good shape and was pretty battered by professional fighters. And Kimbo had not yet met a worthy opponent and was not exhausted in hard fights. I think that if they had both met in their prime, then Tank would definitely win. But this is just my biased opinion. You can leave your thoughts on this fight in the comments because I am very interested in your opinion. In the next fight, Kimbo was waiting for James Thompson, nicknamed the Colossus, who had a record of 14 wins and 8 losses. 
James had an explosive personality and a crystal chin that often let him down. Thompson crazy stares at stare down as usual. In this fight, Kimbo felt a stronger resistance. Thompson did not want to fight according to Kimbo's rules. He defended well and clinched the opponent, moved the fight to the ground, and showed a good ground and pound. Kimbo attacked well in the stance and threw a powerful blow to the target. That's how rounds one and two passed. the end of the third round, Kimbo punches a right swing. Thompson staggered and tried to clinch Kimbo. Ferguson pulls James to the cage and begins to beat him with his hooks and uppercuts. The referee saves Thompson and stops the fight. Colossus disagrees with the actions of the referee and tries to prove to him that he was ready to continue the fight, but if he had missed at least one or two more blows, he would have collapsed dead. This is how Kimbo Slice won another difficult fight. On October 4th, 2008 at the Elite XC Heat Tournament, Kimbo Slice had to fight with another UFC legend of the 90s, Ken Shamrock. This fight was supposed to be the main event of the tournament, however this fight was not destined to take place. Shamrock was cut during the warm-ups before the fight and could not go to fight. The organizers of the tournament immediately began to look for a replacement, and Seth Petrozelli replaced Shamrock. For such a replacement, Kimbo was paid extra, and his total fee for this fight was $500,000, one of the largest fees in mixed martial arts. The fight began, and Kimbo rushes to the attack. But with one right hook, Seth destroyed all the hype and the chain of victories of Ferguson. The loud upset marked the beginning of the collapse of the Elite XC organization, which filed for bankruptcy a couple of weeks after the event. Kimbo was jobless after the Elite Extreme Combat disbandment. Less than a year later, Dana White announced that the next Ultimate Fighter would be held in the heavyweight division, and Kimbo Slice will be their main character in it. There is an opinion that the heavyweight tournament itself was organized just for Kimbo. Already in the first fight, the street champion suffered a crushing defeat from the main favorite of the competition, Roy Nelson. Kimbo was given a chance, and he was left in the promotion. He spent his next fight in the UFC against Houston Alexander and defeated him by decision. His next opponent was Matthew Mitrione. In the first round, Met tried to make a triangle choke, but Kimbo stuck Met in the canvas several times and got out of the grip. Kimbo threw good blows on the ground and controlled Mitrione, and generally won one half of the round. But the second segment of the round was in Met's favor, and he even almost strangled Kimbo. In the second round, Met beat Kimbo's leg with his low kicks. Met worked well in the clinch. On the ground, Kimbo also had a hard time. At first, Met threw heavy strikes with his knees and then completely took a dominant position and threw several punches to the head of Slice. But Kimbo held out. But after another Met attack, the referee decided that it was time for Kimbo and stopped the fight. After this defeat, Dana White decided to dismiss Kimbo. In 2011, Kimbo made his debut in boxing. He had seven fights there and won all seven by knockout. He starred in several films as well. And after five years of boxing and an acting career, he returned to MMA once again. 
The 41-year-old Kimbo had signed a contract with the Bellator promotion. Scott Coker somehow persuaded Ken Shamrock to play against Kimbo. At that time, Shamrock was 51 years old. I want to note that Shamrock looked very good at a pretty honorable age. Finally, the long-awaited fight has begun. Shamrock immediately got into the clinch and then completely moved Kimbo to the ground. On the ground, the fight did not last long and again began fussing in the clinch, where both fighters almost did not attack. Apparently, they were afraid to injure one another. Again, Shamrock moves the fight to the ground and even tries to perform a guillotine choke from the back. He is close to victory, but Slice comes out of the grip. Kimbo starts the final attack. He pushes the UFC veteran to the cage and knocks him out with a right hook. So Kimbo won against the most dangerous fighter of the 90s. In my opinion, the fight was staged or bribed. I can't believe that Shamrock took the opponent to strangle him and just let him go. I will make a separate video about Shamrock so that you understand just how dangerous he was. Kimbo's last fight was on February 19, 2016, with Defeer Harris, better known by the nickname Dada 5000. Dada 5000 was also a street fighter, and he with Kimbo had some kind of personal conflict. It was one of the worst fights in MMA history. In the second round, both fighters were so exhausted that they barely raised their hands. In round three, Kimbo won by knockout, but Dead Air fell not because of punches, but simply because of fatigue. Kimbo won because of better endurance. After this fight, Dead Air 5000 was hospitalized and experienced clinical death, and many prohibited substances were found in the blood of Kimbo, and the fight was canceled. Despite Slice's recent fights that spoil his overall statistics, we saw how a simple guy from the street got up and became a celebrity. He did not have managers, PR, and dirty trash. He just had what he could do best of all, chance and opportunity. 99 days after the fight with Dad at 5000, Kimbo Slice died of heart failure. He left six children, and one of them followed in his father's footsteps and competes in the Bellator. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to click on the thumbs up below, leave your comments as well as subscribe to the channel. In turn, I will show you many other stories of mixed martial art legends. See you all as soon as possible.